Do I like this guy? Should I keep him here or should I just move him to the side? Welcome back to the Canna Couch, whatever you want to call this. Talking about all things cannabis in a more relaxed, informal way, not so much editing. Just a nice way to switch things up from the crazy, fast-paced social media YouTube world. The intention of today is to be less scripted and to really just have an authentic conversation about a topic that I think is really important and comes up a lot from the community. And that topic is using cannabis, using weed as a crutch and not as a compliment to your life. The other day I got into a really terrible fight with my partner and after we had calmed down, we, you know, we were starting to repair. My partner said he wanted to smoke a joint to help him with calming down. A habit that, you know, he's used to. He, he usually uses cannabis as a way to relieve his anxiety, to calm down. And normally I'm okay with this, but I think this time because of how intense the argument was, him telling me that he wanted to consume cannabis right after, it kind of like stopped me in my tracks. I'm all for using cannabis as a tool to help with improving one's life for their physical health, for their mental health, whatever it is. As long as cannabis is serving you in a positive way as an enhancement to your life, I have no qualms about it. But I guess when you're someone that's pretty close to me and I feel like there might be an unhealthy relationship with cannabis that you're developing, I'm going to call you out. And it really comes from love and care. It's not malicious. It's not to meant to shame you. It's saying, hey, I'm like concerned that you feel the need to use cannabis constantly whenever there's an issue that arises. That's when I kind of have a bit of a qualm with it. I'm all for using cannabis as a tool if someone needs it in order to help with a certain challenge that they're having. But I think where there's a fine line here, especially when cannabis is the only solution or it's constantly the first solution. I think that's where that fine line exists. I want to caveat that like today's episode is really just going to be authentic. This episode is not meant for medical cannabis users. If you're medically prescribed, don't listen to me. I'm not a medical doctor. Don't listen to me. But if you're someone that uses cannabis as a therapeutic tool and for recreational purposes, meaning you have certain challenges in your life that are not necessarily like life-threatening, but cannabis is a tool that you've used to address this, whether it's like generalized anxiety, whether it's like stress management, insomnia, things like that, I would say, then this episode is going to be perfect for you. Today, I'm going to talk all about why some people end up developing an unhealthy relationship with cannabis, why cannabis can sometimes be a crutch in some people's lives, how to know when you have an unhealthy relationship with the plant, and how to change the relationship that you currently have with cannabis if you're unhappy with it. But if you feel like you are happy with your relationship with cannabis and you don't have any issues with how you're consuming, then what I'm gonna talk about is not really relevant for you because at the end of the day, you know yourself best, right? Not some person sitting on their couch posting a video. They're not going to know what's best for you because you have the most context as to your consumption, your medical history, your everything. So it's important that you don't take what I'm saying as gospel because it's not. Today's conversation is really just about being honest with ourselves, looking at ourselves in the mirror and like literally just reflecting on whether we use the plant as a compliment to our lives or is it holding us back from addressing some underlying root causes and some root issues, but that actually might need a different solution instead. That's all I'm saying, just food for thought. Before we get into it, for those who don't know me, my name's Anna, also known as Cannabinista. I've been using cannabis for 10 years on and off. Cannabis consumers come from all different walks of life now. They all look different. They aren't your typical stoner nowadays. And those stereotypes are so outdated. They are so incorrect. So really my platform is about bringing together a community that doesn't relate to these stereotypes, doesn't relate to these stigmas and people that want to create healthy relationships with cannabis that want to learn more about the cannabis plant from a culture perspective, from a science perspective, from an everything perspective. That's really what Cannabinista is all about. I will say that I've definitely have experience with not having healthy relationship with certain substances and really having that negatively impact my life and having to completely 180 change my habits, change my lifestyle in order to bring my life back onto the track that I wanted it to be on. I was never your typical stoner. You know, I was always a very moderate user of cannabis. Um, but when I say that in the early days that of me not being mindful is that 
I definitely wasn't as self-aware about when and when not to use cannabis and I didn't have as much intention setting and mindfulness practices when, when using, I guess you could say. But over the past few years, I really learned how to use it as a tool when I need it. As much as I love cannabis, it is not for everyone. It interacts with different people's bodies so differently. It's very, very nuanced and there's still so much research to be done to fully understand this ancient plant, even though our ancestors have been using it for many thousands of years. That's just a little bit of background history about me. Let's get into it. First, I want to cover why people use cannabis to begin with. Um, how does it even all get started? Why some people end up abusing cannabis? How to know when you might have an unhealthy relationship with cannabis? And how to change that relationship with weed if you're not happy with it. For those of you who are listening without watching the video, I have a really cute plushie next to me. He is actually a beet. He's like the size of a small dog, I guess you could say. But he is so adorable and I'm obsessed with him. So that's why I left him in this video. So first of all, why do people even use cannabis to begin with? Three main categories of different cannabis users. The first one is medical users. And these are people who are medically prescribed medical cannabis in order to address their medical concerns. Some people have seizures, they're prescribed medical cannabis. Some cancer patients are prescribed medical cannabis to stimulate their appetite, especially after going through chemotherapy. They usually don't have an appetite and they still need to get some nutrients into their bodies. Cannabis has also been prescribed for veterans with PTSD. It can also help with nausea and vomit vomiting, chronic pain, arthritis. Secondly is therapeutic use. The reason why separated medical from therapeutic is because there are some people who use cannabis in a therapeutic slash medical-ish way, but don't necessarily get medical cannabis. This is for many different reasons. I used to go through the medical channel, but it's actually more difficult and there wasn't a benefit for me personally. The medical cannabis doctors that I've had aren't very helpful. They actually don't really know that much about cannabis. That's why I don't go through the formal medical route, but I still use cannabis for therapeutic. So some therapeutic uses might include sport recovery, um, anxiety, stress management, insomnia and sleep. Uh, a lot of women use cannabis for endometriosis, men menstrual cramps, period pain. Animals also use CBD. A lot of people use cannabis for its anti-inflammatory effects, especially with the research that's been done on cannabinoids like CBD. And then the third category is recreational use. People will use cannabis recreationally for enjoyment, for social settings, and some people use it as a replacement of alcohol, I guess you could say. So why do some people end up abusing cannabis? There's many different reasons why people can develop an unhealthy relationship with cannabis, where it could potentially lead to abusing cannabis, where it's negatively impacting them. And I'm going to share four of those reasons with you here today. The first one is a lack of education. Some people just simply don't understand the dosing of cannabis and that you can build a tolerance towards cannabis over a period of time, especially if you're consuming higher doses, uh, high frequency. And I think there's just a lack of education because it is such a stigmatized topic and there's not a lot of accessible resources. There are resources out there, but people aren't necessarily looking to learn about how to dose appropriately. Second is lack of self-control. This is just my personal opinion and it's not based on science or anything like that, but I think that some people do have a lack of self-control when it comes to recreational use of substances. Same with alcohol, other party substances. And this is not to categorize cannabis as those substances either. I think they're very, very different. But the reason why I've kind of lumped it together for this point, some people do use cannabis for recreational purposes. So it can be very easy to using it for social reasons, but then lacking the self-control to make sure that you're not constantly relying on it as a way to go to social settings. I think there's just a little bit of a delineation between that. The third one is that some people end up abusing cannabis because of pre-existing health conditions. People under the age of 25 should not be consuming cannabis because their brain is still developing and your brain is more sensitive to changes, especially psychoactive changes in which cannabis is a psychoactive plant. People who have severe pre-existing mental health conditions shouldn't be consuming cannabis because it can really exacerbate some of those conditions and end up making things worse for people. And number four is because they prefer to be high than to be sober. And this point is kind of similar to alcohol, right? Anecdotally, I see a lot of people talking about online at least, how they prefer to consume cannabis because they hate dealing with people. Cannabis makes it easier for them to deal with situations. I think there is a fine line here, right? Because I've talked about before my platforms where using cannabis helps me develop more empathetic connections with people, which I think is fine. 
But where it can become problematic, at least in my opinion, is if I'm constantly using cannabis in order to go to social settings. I think that's when it would indicate to me that, hey, is there a reason for this? That's what would kind of make me question my own use. This topic is so nuanced, so please take everything with such a grain of salt. Now I'm gonna share with you some potential indicators that you might have an unhealthy relationship with cannabis. First one is that you have developed a dependency and a tolerance towards cannabis. I've talked about this recently in one of my episodes on tolerance breaks. So please go to that piece of content to get the in-depth understanding of the difference between tolerance, dependency, and addiction. Today's purposes, I'm just talking about dependency and tolerance. Um, yes, you can develop a tolerance towards cannabis and you can develop a dependency. How you might know that this is happening is one, if you are constantly increasing your dose and needing more in order to feel the same effects that you used to. Number two, you're increasing how often you consume and how frequent you consume. Three, you're constantly thinking about it. Everything you do kind of revolves around it. You have negative effects when you don't use it. Three or four, I forget which number I'm on right now, but it's negatively impacting your life and your life obligations, meaning work, school, relationships, and so forth. Number five, you're unable to be sober. Another reason might be if a close friend or a family member has brought it up to you as an issue. Your close friends and your family will generally have your best interest at heart, um, assuming that these people care about you <laughs> and assuming that they are your genuine friends and family. If they are reaching out to you in a respectful way and telling you that they're noticing these certain side effects from your consumption patterns, I think it's worth listening and hearing them out because they might be seeing something that you're not seeing yourself. I know it can be difficult because sometimes we feel defensive when someone is giving us feedback that we don't think is true. Hear them out. You don't have to respond immediately and take that information that they've given to you for a couple days, for a week, whatever it may be, and try to just like digest it. Because I find that when you kind of create a distance from feedback and you actually take the time to be logical about it versus being emotional, it can actually really help you see something that you might not have seen in yourself. People aren't always out there to get you. Um, there are people that are genuinely trying to help you. And if someone is taking the time to respectfully reach out to you and tell you something, um, that might be of concern, I think it's worth listening to. And then the last reason is that you're spending more money on cannabis than you want to and more than you can afford to. And it goes the same thing with any other thing in your life, whether it's shopping habits, whether it's alcohol, whatever it is. When spending on something is causing you financial detriment, that is definitely a point of concern and that can affect your livelihood, right? So now that we've talked all about what an unhealthy relationship with cannabis is, you might want to know how how do I create a healthy relationship with cannabis? How do I change the relationship that I currently have with weed? It's actually quite simple and the solution is free. I'm gonna share with you five tips on how to change your relationship with cannabis. Number one, mindful consumption. This term is so important and really what it means is about setting intentions and being aware of your consumption patterns. The next time that you want to consume, just pause. Don't grab your joint, don't grab your edible, don't get your oil, don't, don't go for it right away. Just pause for a few seconds and just ask yourself why. Why do you need the plant today? Is it for a specific reason? Is it because you're bored? Is it because you need it to help with a certain ailment? What is the reason? And I find that just taking a few seconds to just think, but being conscious is bringing that self-awareness back to the present moment and asking yourself in this moment, I'm about to do this, why am I doing this? So having those few seconds of conversation with yourself can either confirm that you do need to take the plant for whatever reason, or two, confirm that you actually might need something else instead. A great example of this is um, the other day, actually. I was really, really anxious. Um, I think just a lot of things have been happening in my life. I also worked a little bit later and I was like sitting in front of the desk for a really, really long time that day. Instead of going right for cannabis to help me alleviate the anxiety that I was feeling, I actually just went outside for a 30 minute power walk instead. And by creating that bit of separation and time between me and using cannabis, I was actually able to decide that, hey, I actually don't need to consume tonight anymore. I feel a little bit better after my walk. Uh, I'm actually just gonna end up eating dinner and then showering and then just try to meditate. And I didn't really want to use cannabis as the go-to solution because I was feeling pretty negative and in a very negative headspace. Certain moments when I have anxiety, I will use the plant, but then certain times I won't. So I think you just really have to know your body and create that bit of a 
balance with yourself. When is the best time for you to use? Which situation is best for you to use? I don't necessarily want to be using cannabis every time I feel an anxious moment. Like for me personally, I get anxious a few times throughout the day. So if I'm constantly consuming, it doesn't give me that opportunity to just sit with the thoughts and feel it. Because sometimes you just got to feel it. And after you get past that feeling, you realize that you are stronger than that issue itself. The second tip I have is to find alternatives to cannabis and ensure other aspects of your life are working for you well. Check your exercise. Are you exercising daily? Are you going out for walks every day and making sure you see the sunlight and make sure you get some fresh air? Are you eating right? How is your nutrition? Do you have healthy relationships that are serving you well? And how is your mental health? How is your sleep? I've heard through some people where they use cannabis because it makes them feel happier. Do you have other parts of life that give you happiness? You know, if someone is saying that cannabis is their only source of happiness or they use cannabis because it makes them feel happy, you know, I'd probably ask them, you know, are you eating right? Are you getting enough vitamin D? What's going on with your friendships and your family life and your relationships? Is there a reason why there aren't other aspects of your life that are giving you happiness, right? And obviously this is just one example. I always like to just look at alternative ways to improve whatever situation I'm feeling beyond cannabis, feeling very depressed about something. Instead of going to cannabis, I'll call my best friend, right? Maybe just talking to her will make me feel better. And it usually does. But then other times I will choose to consume because I know that cannabis is going to be the right solution for that situation. The third tip I have is to track your intake and document your experience and the effects. I personally don't do this, but the reason why I put this as an example is because it might be helpful for some people as they're changing their relationship with cannabis. So if you're someone one that hasn't really practiced mindfulness, mindful consumption in the past few years, this is a great tool for you to start the habit of being really intentional and present with your consumption. So on a piece of paper, on a journal, doesn't have to be fancy, right? Doesn't even, you don't even have to go buy a new booklet or you can even type it up if you want. Every time that you consume, write down your dose, write down the product, write down the formulation. At the end of the week, look back at how many times you consumed, what you consumed, and see if there were any situations where you didn't necessarily need to consume. And I think that's a good starting point for you to understand your consumption patterns and then make adjustments based off that. Number fourth tip is to set boundaries and breaks, whether it's an extended break, such as a tolerance break or little breaks throughout the week. It's a great way to change up the relationship that you have with cannabis. I have a whole episode where I talked about tolerance breaks. And in that video, I shared everything that I learned about tolerance breaks, how to take one, tips for one, how to stay accountable. And I also have a free tolerance break guide that you can download on my website, which gives you tips and tricks, how to deal with one, how to prepare for one, and even a journal template that you can use. And the last tip I have for how to change your relationship with cannabis is to hold yourself accountable. All the things that I've mentioned, you know, from mindful consumption to finding alternatives, making sure other aspects of your life are in check, all that is great. But if you don't execute and don't hold yourself accountable, it's going to mean nothing. Really setting an intention about saying how you want to change your relationship with cannabis and then putting it down in your calendar to do it, ultimately changing the trajectory of the relationship that you have with cannabis. I think it's important to know that you're not alone. Your reasons for consuming cannabis are valid. There's a reason why you consume. And in order to have a sustainable relationship with the plant, it's really important to develop healthy boundaries, healthy intentions, mindful intentions about how you want to use this plant to help you live your best life. Too much of anything can have negative side effects. And even though cannabis has never caused a death in the history of cannabis, it can have side effects when you abuse it or you don't use it in a responsible manner. I hope you found today's episode helpful. Whether you could relate to it or you have a friend that could benefit from listening to this, please share with them. I think cannabis is such a beautiful plant and ultimately it is a healing plant when used appropriately. Responsible use of cannabis doesn't get talked about enough and I think it's important in order to curate a really healthy relationship with cannabis. You know, our society is so used to overdoing things in life, you know, whether it's like with food, consumption of products, shopping, so part of Western culture that I find that we sometimes need to bring ourselves back and like really understand balance is the key to a lot of things in life. At the end of the day, it's all about being mindful and aware of your choices and your usage and making sure that the plant is still serving as a complement to your life and not as a crutch. 
If you like today's content, be sure to subscribe, follow on whatever platform you're listening to this on. Join me on all the social medias where I share a lot of cannabis educational content, cannabis infused recipes. I'll also be launching a waitlist for my 30 day program on how to create a healthy relationship with cannabis. There's gonna be a limited number of spots and I'm gonna be opening up the waitlist soon. So to get on the waitlist, subscribe to my newsletter at thecannabinista.com slash newsletter. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye.